Hello fellow tech enthusiasts and today we're going to be looking at this tiny little fast charge module that promises some really decent things when it comes to fast charging. And even better, these things cost less than £1 each, which is really really good. So if you're looking for a cheap and inexpensive fast charger module for charging your phones up when on the go, look no further, let's have a look at these modules here and see if they're good to go. Now before we get started, are these little buggers going to blow my phone up and ruin my beloved devices? Well fear not my friends, I'm going to put these little modules to the test and see if they live up to the hype without any mishaps. So sit back and relax and let's see what these little things can do. So to start off with, there's not much information I can find about these little tiny modules. There's a little inductor, a couple of capacitors and a little LED on there, a USB socket output and a little chip which I cannot find any information on because the manufacturers have nicely ground the numbers off the top of the chips. According to the AliExpress page that they were bought from, they are numbered as a CKCY-U1A. We can see there is a 36 volt capacitor on the input, so hopefully it can take up to about 35, 36 volts. And we have a 16 volt on the output, so hopefully that's sufficient for allowing fast charging to happen. According to the seller specification, this little guy packs a punch. It can accept a wide range of input voltage ranging from 6 volts to 32 volts. And it has an output voltage that can automatically adjust between 3 volts and 12 volts, depending on whether your device triggers fast charging. It supposedly supports a whole range of fast charging protocols including BC 1.2, iPhone, Samsung, Qualcomm QC 2.0 and QC 3.0, and MTKPEI.1 and PE2.0 fast charging protocols. If that isn't enough for you, who knows? Fast charging protocols AFC and spread spectrum fast charge agreement are also mentioned. You can almost charge anything anywhere. And did we mention it has an impressive conversion efficiency of 90 to 97%? Uh, well, let's see if that's true or not. So let's go ahead and put this thing under some real world tests I'm going to charge up a few devices, take some power measurements and see if we can work out that efficiency rating. Let's get these things out of the way. Right, we've got this thing connected up to a DC power supply set to 12 volts to simulate a 12 volt leisure battery. And then let's actually bring in our phone here for testing. This is an Oppo phone that should support fast charging. Unfortunately, attaching our meter here does prevent the fast charging from starting. Well, we've had to fall back to using a multimeter here and cutting the charge lead to take the readings. Less than ideal, but it should be giving us a more accurate reading anyway. We now have fast charging triggered with the screen off, which yields the best results. And we can see the current charge voltage is at 8.85 volts and we're getting 1.55 amps going into the device. On the power supply end we're putting in 12 volts at 1.22 amps. And now for this next test we'll be charging this Samsung tablet. Here we're putting in a fast charge current of 1.6 amps while pulling 1.3 amps from the power supply and we've got a charge voltage of 8.95 volts with a 12 volt input. And for a final test here, I'll plug in this power bank which is not fast charge compatible to see how much current our charger will give us into this device. The power bank itself has a rating of 0.8 amps as the input charge current. And we can see the charger is providing us about 0.7 amps. So this charger has detected that this is a lower current device and is providing the correct current. This torch here also does not support fast charge and the charger is currently providing us just 0.36 amps. So this charger should definitely be safe to use with your older charging items that do not support the fast charging. So during the test we managed to drop down the following numbers. When we are charging the phone, the input power supply was providing 12 volts at 1.22 amps. That was a total of 14.6 watts. The output current going into the phone was 8.8 85 volts at 1.5 amps that gave us 13.275 watts and then if we work out the efficiency of that that came to a good efficiency of 90.08 percent likewise when we were charging the galaxy tab we had a input voltage of 12 and an input ampage of 1.3 amps that gave us a 15.6 watt charge going into the tab at the other end we had 8.95 volts at 1.6 amps 
that gave us a charge power of 14.32 watts and the overall efficiency of that charging was 91.79%. So this is kind of within its efficiency range, um, not up the top end, 98%, but that's not bad at all. You'll find that once the fast charge has completed and it's just doing that slow top up charge, that's when the efficiency really climbs up into those 95, 98%. Well folks, that was quite amazing really. These devices seem to perform as expected. Uh, one thing I didn't note was the temperature change in the devices. When fast charging, they did get warm. I wouldn't call them hot. I could have measured the temperature. I'd say about 40 uh, degrees Celsius. So just bear that in mind. They may want to be mounted somewhere where they can get some air circulation. And there was another little specification that we did check. They do have a short circuit protect because when I was cutting my USB lead and connect it up to the multimeter, I did short circuit the output of these devices, which caused them to go into a current limiting mode. So in conclusion, there we have it. These are a true workhorse. They're pretty versatile and they actually provide the kind of efficiencies that we were looking at in the spec. It really is a Swiss army knife of charging devices with all those listed fast charge specifications there. And all things considering, including price, it's a well worthwhile little device. Thanks for watching, and if you like that video, don't forget to click the like and subscribe, and I hope you stay charged.